Hi, this is Jason Toll with NAI RealVest. Thank you for watching the Toll Land Vlog. Today we're talking with Tara Tedro of the Lowndes Law Firm. Tara is a land use attorney and we're speaking about issues that affect long-term landowners. In this segment, which is number four of four, we're talking about utilities, how to bring utilities and the requirements for utilities and development uh, for land developers. And we will have Tara take it away from here. You know, Lake County, the county itself does not provide utilities. Utilities come through uh, the municipalities, whether we're talking about, we're talking about water and also sewer. Uh, in order for projects to be approved, they have to have these connections, dense projects. Mm -hmm. They have to have connections to utilities. When the property is not in the municipal boundaries of the city or, or not close to it, mm -hmm. how do you overcome those hurdles or can you overcome those hurdles? Those are very specific determinations, something you would want to look at early on in right. the due diligence period on a piece of property, especially for folks who have really intense utility needs. If you have a big industrial user coming in, for example, that's going to be different from a utility perspective than if I was bringing in one single tenant office user. So during due diligence, you always want to find out if the infrastructure is already in place because the cost of extending those lines can oftentimes be cost prohibitive mm -hmm. for a project to move forward. So you want to see what utilities are currently in place. And then if you have to connect to those utilities that you don't already have, does that require you in some instances to annex into a different jurisdiction? So for example, do I need to annex annex out of Lake County into one of the incorporated municipalities that is a service provider for those mm -hmm. utilities. Because mm -hmm. if you do, then that's an additional layer of approvals that you have to go through of bringing that piece of property into the jurisdictional boundaries of that incorporated municipality. And you have to meet certain statutory criteria as well as local government criteria. And you can't go through that future land use map and rezoning process that we talked about until the annexation is actually approved. Even if you run them concurrently, the annexation always has to come first on that approval list. You know, and I think having the guidance of a uh, experienced broker can help you yes, befo can. before you go to contract to understand the the time, the time frames, the critical dates, uh, the time that's needed to have those approvals. If you're looking at annexation, as you mentioned, that's a whole other layer layer of approvals. And that's what I appreciated working with you is that you came in knowing so much about the property more than the lawyers are going to know when they walk into a deal, mm -hmm. right? So doing that investigation on the front end can save your clients a lot of time and money uh, that they don't have to spare, mm -hmm. you know, in those instances, because you already know exactly what they can expect. And then you bring somebody in on the team to help you get the entitlements that you need for them to be able to close on the property. I appreciate you saying that. In my opinion, it's an orchestrated effort mm -hmm. and everyone plays a role and, and it's essential to have uh, a well orchestrated team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it seems that we have success every time that happens. Absolutely. Absolutely.